Then I cut two in muslin, pinned them on the gown, and tested out my mobility by doing an awkward dance. Would it be done anyway else? Hey y'all, Jackie here, and welcome to Fantastical Follies, where we get up to various sewing shenanigans. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back to the insanity, my friends. This is part one of two on how to make a historically inspired 18th century English gown, the grand finale for my Glam Rock Goes Rococo series, where I'm turning myself into a 1770s David Bowie. I'm splitting it for two reasons. One, I'm not finished hand sewing all of the trim. <laughs> I didn't want to rush it and breeze through filming the reveal and editing the video when this is the culmination of a literal year-long project. I wanted to give it the time and attention it deserves and still make my every other Thursday upload schedule. Two, the video was getting insanely long. Because this contains what I think is a lot of information that isn't readily available in other videos, including how to level a petticoat over large hoops and an in-depth explanation on how to actually do the pleating on the back of the gown, I didn't want to cut it to keep time down. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through how I made this gown up through the drafting of the sleeves. There's going to be a little less shenanigans and a little more instruction than normal. The next video is going to be back to the regular level of silliness. It'll cover setting in the sleeves, then adding the sleeve puffs, all of the trim, fixing a couple of problems, and then finally the reveal. My goal is to get that video out a week from when this one airs, but if I can't make that work, it'll be the normal two weeks from then. So, if I haven't scared you away yet, please consider looking down and seeing if you've hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, why not give it a little push so you know when that video comes out. The gown is looking so cool, even if I'm going cross-eyed from all of the stripes. <laughs> Also, if you haven't watched any of the other videos in my Glam Rock Goes Rococo series, where I make an entire 18th century kit with Ziggy Stardust inspired decorations, you can check out the playlist here and in the description below. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this short. In my mock-up video, I talked a little about what makes an English gown an English gown. I also talked about how difficult it is because of all of the back pleating. What I didn't talk about was the difference in styles between the early and later gowns. There are a lot more videos available about the earlier style English gowns with the robings, the stomacher, and the large sleeves because of this book, The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Dressmaking. However, their English gown is from the 1740s and consequently a different style than the one I'm making. In the 70s, we're seeing tighter sleeves, the pleating in the back is much narrower, and instead of the robings, it closes at the center front with pins and doesn't have a stomacher. That's what we're making today. Materials. Because this is my first historically adequate 18th century gown, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on materials. It's a cosplay and I knew it wouldn't be perfect, so I didn't want to shell out the cash for silk or wool when I knew it was going to have issues. I used five yards of 58 inch cotton twill shirting for the gown. I used three yards of 60 inch cotton voile for the petticoat. Don't do this. I regretted not spending the extra couple of dollars per yard to get a heavier weight cotton. Full of regrets. The lining is a standard 5.3 ounce bleached linen. I probably used about a yard-ish. I'm using a combination of standard black poly thread for the machine sewn bits and black cotton thread I had left over from Maleficent to do the hand sewn portions. Originally, I'd wanted to do this completely by hand, but now I have a deadline to get through and it's going to be about half and half. So let's get started with the construction. First, I needed to measure the length of my skirts for both the petticoat and the gown. Notice I'm wearing the appropriate shoes. That's important. And yes, I still need to paint one of them. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Take the measurement from your waist to where you want the petticoat to stop. I'm going right about to the ground so I can make a few adjustments if I need to. Do this over your support. 
add about an inch and a half to your length for seam allowance. And then for the petticoat, go ahead and cut two lengths of fabric along the selvage to make your skirt front and back. This is for 60 inch wide fabric. If you have 45 inch fabric, you'll need to cut three panels. For a gown over hips this wide, you don't want the hem any less than about 120 inches. To give you a reference, my panels are 52 and a half inches long. I'm five foot three and the boots have a one and a half inch heel. This ended up to be a little long, but you'll see that later. Okay, let's talk about this petticoat. So up until now, this has been constructed the way most 18th century petticoats are constructed, i.e. they are sewn up at the sides and then we sew the hems for the pocket slits, right? And then this will get sewn. The insides are sewn backstitched and then felled. Obviously I'm in the middle of this, but um, I wanted to get this shot while I still have daylight. So um, normal procedure from here would be to pleat everything, divide it and conquer it, put a waistband on, la di da di da di da. If you were putting this over a small hoop or a bum, you would pleat it and then raise the hem over the top of it. Um, I will link to a good explanation of that down below from Burnley and Trowbridge. They will explain it way better than I could ever hope to. However, we are doing this over a large hoop and the pleating method is not going to work. I searched and searched and searched for an answer to this and finally I found one on American Duchess. What would we do without American Duchess? So without further ado, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix this. There is going to be at the top of this, and uh, editing Jackie will put up a diagram of this up so that you can visually see what I'm trying to talk about. This is the top of the petticoat. Doesn't matter whether this is front or back, I don't care right now. What we're going to do is actually sew the top inch of this together like this. These pocket slits are not going to be used with this costume. Instead, we are going to sew a channel here to a certain size and then put a ribbon or something through it, some tape, and use that to gather over the panniers so that it distributes the fullness of the fabric over the pannier in a more pleasing manner. Someone had a very good suggestion in the comment section of the blog that I have linked to down below that explains this process, in that if you only do the drawstring, you can only wear this over large hoops. I like a multitasker. So I am also going to put the pocket slits in there so that if I would like to wear this under something that doesn't have crazy hoops, I can. I am going to do a, I believe I'm gonna do 18 inches. That will give me an extra six inches of drawstring, which will hopefully make my uh, width a little bit better. So let's get started here. I'm marking an inch down from the top. That is where I want the bottom of my drawstring to go. I don't want to have a wider seam allowance than that. And now I'm marking a quarter inch from the top and I'm gonna fold that over. Once everything was marked, I turned under the top edge by a quarter of an inch. And then we'll fold it over to the line and we'll do the same to the other side. And then I'm gonna open this back up and pin this inch together. And I'm actually gonna sew this side. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that my mock-up went. There are only a couple of few small adjustments I need to make to my pattern before I go ahead and get this cut out on the lining. So the first thing I need to do is modify the bodice front. So it was a little, it was a little short right here and it's showing my, my top. I'm not sure if that is going to be the case for my actual gown because obviously I will be wearing a different set of underpinnings. However, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna extend this up about a half an inch. I might do like three quarters, five eighths of an inch um, just to be on the safe side. And then also I'm gonna extend the bodice front down because it was just barely too short to even cover my stays. And of course I'll be wearing a petticoat with this so it won't be quite as much of an issue, but I wouldn't mind having a little bit of a longer bottom. I can always cut it off if it's not quite right. So let's do that first. Okay, so that's the bodice taken care of. So next, 
I need to modify the back a little bit. Um, this is just too long. I'm just gonna cut an inch and a half off. And then the last thing I need to do is extend this. This is the gown skirt portion of the reconstructing history pattern. I'm gonna use this because it's a large sheet of paper and I'm gonna have to tape it to, I mean, it's a square, right? Um, but what they did was they only gave you like a certain amount and you have to extend it down to where it needs to be. So I have not actually measured this yet. So let's do that first and figure out how long this is. 5, 26, 20, 27 and a half inches long. So I need 51 inches plus two inches for him. So that's 53 inches. After noodling way too long about math, I use scrap paper to extend my pattern down to the correct length. I have the lining basted together. I made a couple of mistakes, stupid mistakes. Firstly, I sewed the sleeves on in the wrong direction. As you can see, my seams are facing out here and my seams are facing in here. So I have to fix that. I also did this again. I made I made the butt at the top. I had to, uh, if you recall from the other video, I had to piece that together. So I'm gonna have to do that again. And before I do anything else, I'm going to fix this dip so that I don't have to do it on the main bodice. Last night, I also sewed myself a couple of lacing strips. So what I'm gonna do now is based on the lacing strips to my lining and put the whole kit on and check it for fit. It should fit as is because this is exactly the pattern that I used for the original mock-up. Y'all like my hair? I was taking photos today and uh, just decided to leave it up. It's about five days after I filmed the last segment. And all I wanna say is I almost got cocky and just cut out the entire gown, but I didn't. I decided to baste everything together and put it on my body and see what was going on. And thank God I did. I'm gonna take a little turn around and you will see why I said that. Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened. I thought that was the right pattern. I put it up against my mock-up and it was so much larger. I've got maybe three inches pulled. Now, obviously there is a gap here and I did that intentionally because I, you know, always wanna be able to take it in and let it out if I have to. It's huge, especially in the back. Look at all this, look at all this excess. And I even have to take in just a little bit more. I'm also gonna cut this off a little bit shorter. Other than that, I'm happy with it. I do have a little wrinkle happening right here, but that'll go away once I turn up the seam allowance. It's just a little too long-waisted for me right now. Surprise, surprise. It has taken me on and off a couple of days of basing and checking and basing and checking to get it on. Not as much work as it was the first time with the mock-up. Obviously the shape was pretty much there. It just, for some reason, was wider. Um, in any case, I am going to transfer all of the changes onto the paper pattern that I have so that moving forward, I have a block that I can use that is the right size. I think we're good to go to get the gown cut out. Ah. All right, let's talk about the changes that I've made on this pattern. Here is the lining bodice back. I cut this down about an inch and modified the sides here. And then I took out a chunk of the center. And again, to give you an idea of how much I took out of the middle, this, that's the line that I ended up cutting. I, I do have concerns about the grain thing here happening because this is definitely cut in a diagonal and that is definitely how it needs to be cut. <laughs> that may have to happen. I may have to modify this in the future, um, but I will deal that with that at a later date. For the bodice front, here is the new cutting line for the lining. And to give you an idea, this was the cutting line I used before. And then I also straightened out this back, had a weird curve on it. And that came from doing all of my pinning stuff. I'm not really sure how or why, but in any case, I cut that off. Um, and that had actually had a pattern tracing wheel on it. So that told me that that's what I did with the lining of the mock-up. But I did put this against the finished front bodice mock-up. And apart from, you know, this little bit that I added before and the lower length of this, it fit exactly. So I did end up using this for my bodice front. It just 
was too big for my lining. The last thing I wanna show you is the gown bodice back. For this, I actually added an extra half an inch on this fold here. I had a difficult time getting all the pleating into the back on my mock-up without losing all of my seam allowance. So I decided to add an extra inch in the center to make sure that I don't run out of seam allowance. I can always cut it down if I need to. Here is the line where the lining ends. I wanted to make it just slightly longer, again, in case it does something weird, I have a little bit of extra at the top. So as you can see, there is a lot of room here for pleating. I'm gonna use this as a guide for my cutting so that I make sure I have enough fabric for the sleeves, but I am not gonna cut the sleeves out until I do a mock-up on the gown that is almost finished and ready for sleeves. So that's gonna be basically one of the last things I do before I trim. Okay, my ACs are running, my fans are clicking, the fabric's on the floor, it takes up my entire length of my apartment, by the way, plus some. I have double checked the length to make sure that I have enough, and I'm going to pin this sucker down and get her cut. I then surged most of the edges to my lining pieces and reassembled them together with basting stitches. The exception to this was the new center back seam, which I machine sewed together in preparation for the pleating. I have basted my bodice together and I'm pretty happy with it. And now I am going to fit the petticoat. However, before I do that, I wanna show you something funny. This would make more sense if I had actually finished my chitin video, but the construction of this reminds me of a Greek chitin. And in fact, I'm gonna try it. Okay, I mean, apart from the hoop, which sort of ruins the effect, you have a chitin. It's a triple tasker. So what we need to do now is mark for pleats. I have, this is the center front. So what I'm gonna do is pin this to my center front. Then we're gonna pretend that this is closed as much as it can be. We'll do the same on the other side. We're probably only gonna have to put like two pleats into this, like that, I think. It's not gonna be much. And we'll do probably one or two more in the back because um, we don't need a, as big of a box pleat in the back. I'm gonna measure from basically this point, which is a couple of inches away from my center, basically between the two center ribbons. Okay, and I've got my measurement, so I'm going to pleat to that measurement in the front and the back. Pleating the petticoat is exactly the same as in my under petticoat video, which I've linked to in the card at the top of the screen. The only difference is that there will be a larger box pleat in the center to create a nice, pretty flat middle. I'm then going to hand base the pleats down about a foot from the top of the petticoat so that they stay intact for leveling the hem. Then I turned in a small hem on the fronts of the gown bodice pieces and then the gown fronts. I measured a 10 inch pocket slit on the other sides of the gown front. I'm not going to attach the skirts yet though because I don't want all of that extra weight to deal with while I pleat the back. Pleat time! First, lay your back lining pieces and your back bodice piece wrong sides together, matching centers. Hello and welcome to Pleating Black on Black on Black. I am your host, Jackie Black. Ha 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 ha, not really. Um, okay, yesterday I backstitched quite not straight. Um, the back of the gown to my lining, okay, on the center. I really should have done it the other way where this was the front and the lining was the back because it looks better that way. But that's not how I did it, so whatever, you're not gonna see it. It's no big deal. This is arguably the most difficult part of the gown. So I am going to take some time to show you how I did this. If 
you have the means to do this on your body with a second party, do it. Only pleat it on your board if you have no other way of pleating it. Trust me, this is not the easy way. It is not the fun way. This is the hard way. But unfortunately, I don't have a choice. Okay, so you can kind of see the outline of my lining here. What I am going to do first is match up this seam. Okay, and it is, it's slightly different, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much because we'll fix it later. We just want to have kind of an anchor point and then sort of pin down the seam allowances so we know how much we're working with. I can always change this if I have to. I've given myself some extra um, space in the back. So if I end up having too much bulk to pleat down, then I can always move it over. But for now, we are gonna pretend like we did that right, okay. So one thing I have learned about this is that, for me at least, it's best to do it once and fiddle with it, come back to it, fiddle with it, come back to it. I am not the kind of person that can just sit here and do all of this at once. I just don't have the patience. And like, like when you're doing fine art, sometimes taking the time to step away from the project helps you fix your vision. This is only going to be the first round and I'm not gonna show you me pleating this over and over again. This is going to be kind of the main pleating portion of this. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done after I'm done fiddling with it. Okay, so, so now it looks a little funky, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put a box pleat in the center. Now I want this to be even. For this first round, I will be measuring my pleats. Y'all know I hate measuring pleats. It may not stay that way. So I'm gonna go over an inch on each side. This is an inverted box pleat. So we're gonna take this here and pleat it down. And I am actually going to pin directly into my ironing board. And I wanna stop about here. Essentially where I'm stopping is going to be where the pleating of the skirts picks up. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pleat it in towards the center. So there's our inverted box pleat. The other pleats are going to radiate out towards the sides. Since this is a later gown, we are going to make smaller pleats. And I'm actually gonna take in more towards the back here because of the way that my back is shaped. This is gonna look different for every person. Okay. That is why it's really better to do this on a body because you really are, are sleeting this to the curves of your body. I don't have that luxury, so I have to do it to the lining. That is why I was so meticulous about getting my lining to fit me perfectly. And the ultimate goal here is A, to make it fit, and B, to make it pretty. This is the focal point of this gown. Of course, this particular gown is black, and um, there is gonna be a hell of a lot happening in the front, so, you know, that's, that's kind of relative to this particular project. But this is like the big thing about this gown. Okay, and I'm kind of trying to make sure this pleat is equal-ish in size. Take your time with this. Don't rush. Become zen with the pleats. All right, I'm gonna leave this for a little bit, take a look at it, and then um, just fiddle with it here and there to get it to look like the way I want. Here is the completed pleats. Last night I sewed them down using a prick stitch per American Duchess, which is a spaced back stitch. I did want to show you that, but given that this is black on black and I do all my hand sewing at night, there was no way that I was going to be able to get that lit in a way that would be seen. If y'all would like me to show you a demonstration of that, please leave me a comment down below and um, maybe I'll make a short or something using better fabric to show you how I did it. It was pretty easy and um, I quite like the result. It's nice. Uh, it looks very 18th century to me. So next on the docket is to take these 
skirt pieces I'm going to put in my pocket slits and then sew the side seams to the other skirt pieces in preparation for pleating the skirt. Once the pocket slits were sewed, I machine stitched the sides. Originally I was going to backstitch and fell because it looks prettier, but these are on the selvage, so why would I waste my time felling them? I marked on each side where I wanted the pockets to be, then I pinned each panel to the spot to prepare for pleating. Alrighty, so uh, the other night I got down to starting the pleating just to kind of fiddle around with it and see what I wanted to do and noticed that the front skirt had way too much fabric in it compared to the back skirt. And I wish I had taken a picture of it. I didn't because it was late and the lighting wasn't great and this black on black is so hard to film. Um, I had like, I don't know, two feet of extra fabric that I could not get into pleats. And then I realized gown skirts front, cut to, not on fold. Guess what I did? I cut them on the fold, which means that my front skirts were twice as big as they should have been. Not a happy camper. So the more historically less wasteful decision would have been to remove an entire skirt front panel and then cut the other panel in half and sew it back onto the other side. But um, I am facing a deadline now and I do have other projects I need to accomplish before that deadline. So I decided instead I would just cut half of the panel off and then all I had to do was re-sew the pocket and hand sew this front finishing down, which, which took all of like 15 minutes. And then I did go ahead and serge the tops of all of the skirts. And yes, it's white. I didn't feel like changing my searcher thread. It's a pain in the ass. Um, because this fabric was fraying like crazy while I was pleating it, and I just think I'll have better control. It'll be neater. Um, you won't see this at the end because of the way that we are going to fit the skirts. So the only problem is now I have two 53 by 30 inch panels of fabric left over, which is not that big of a deal, right? But it is because this pattern told me to buy five yards of this and I bought five yards and this is a good yard and a half that is getting wasted. I did not need to purchase. And I know that once I cut the sleeves out, I'm gonna have even more extra fabric. So kind of annoyed by that, but at least, you know, I used cheap cotton voile for this. So, you know, it was only like $7 a yard. It's not that big of a loss. And I think that I have enough that I might be able to make like a black pirate shirt out of it. Um, everybody's been cosplaying our flag man's death recently and I've been loving it and all of these black pirate shirts are great so this is enough fabric that I should be able to make something like that so at least this fabric won't go to waste but um, I, it is kind of annoying. The dress is in a really delicate state right now because of this juncture between the back and the skirts as you can see it is starting to fray already um, and so I really just want to get these pleats in and at least basted so I can handle this, this fabric with a little bit more ease. So on my lining, I have marked where I want my pockets to go. Now the front is going to be pleated thicker than the back because there just is less space. These later gowns don't go to the front edge. They, they, they go between three and five inches back from the front edge. That being said, there's a two inch gap here. The end of the skirt is actually going to extend past this lining. As you can see on my mock-up here, here's the lining. And then we take the skirt and we extend it to the front. But it won't extend this much. This was meant to close at the front. I'm thinking I may just go to about an inch here. Let's get the fronts basted on and then look at it from there. Before I went any further, I wanted to get the back pleated and pinned to avoid the aforementioned pulling. I measured the distance I wanted onto the ironing board and just pleated everything by eye. I'm using knife pleats here. For the later gowns, you want to pleat all toward the back. If you're doing an earlier gown, the pleats go toward the pockets. Once everything was pinned the way I liked it, I took the pins out of the ironing board and basted by hand at the top, making sure I encased all of the folds. I then pinned the pleating down on the skirt to about the edge of the pocket slit. 
Once that was done, I started tucking the skirt under the back pleating, creating a small hidden box pleat to make sure the skirts were underneath. Struggling a lot with this. So I switched gears and went on to the petticoat. Okay. I tried to do the hem leveling on my body with this on and was not successful at all. I was having a huge issue trying to get it to look right. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this line here is where I need it to be to get this up off of the floor. <laughs> And I could not, I couldn't get this line to coincide with these pocket bits. There's so much pulling. I think part of it is this fabric is not really great for this. I admit that. Here is the end of the casing and I just sort of folded it up till it laid flat. And I'm gonna go ahead, just cut this off, put the waistband on. And then from there, I'm going to hem it from the bottom. I don't know if that is 100% historically accurate. The important thing is, is that A, it looks pretty, and B, it doesn't cause me to pull my hair out. So in light of not wanting to pull my hair out, I'm just going to level it from the bottom. But first we're gonna get the waistband on so that we know where it lies. And then once the waistband's on, I can get rid of all of this pleating and see how it's actually falling. And from there we can make the decision on where the hem is gonna go. I quickly cut down the top and both the front and the back. I marked the center's front and back and then added the waist tape like I did on my under petticoat video. I then hand stitched the tape on. I really wish I had done what I did in the mock-up and sewed past where I wanted the stitching to end and pressed because I think it looks a lot neater. So I pinned everything down and I'm trying to fix it here. Then I flipped up the back skirt and pinned it to the lining. I regret using the red cotton voile for my petticoat. It's too lightweight. So I made a quick longer under petticoat using basic white muslin and non-historical techniques to smooth it out. Then I threw everything onto Gertie with the hoops to commence pinning up the hem. I measured two inches from the ground all the way around. Then I cut off the excess, totally forgetting to add seam allowance. Oh well. Then it was time to pleat the front. I measured the distance I needed the skirt to be and went about pleating. Notice that these pleats are much smaller and tighter. Even with removing my extra panels from the skirt front, they fit into a much smaller area than the back. Next time I make one of these skirts, I'm going to redistribute the skirt front and skirt back fullness a little differently, I think. If anyone has any suggestions on how to do that, please leave me a comment down below. Hey y'all. First off, I'd like to apologize for this segment and or any other segments in this video or in future videos or past videos where you can hear my air conditioning or the clicking of my ceiling fan. The sad fact is, is that even though it's the beginning of June, it is 102 degrees outside and I'm not exaggerating. We are not likely to see a high lower than 90 until the beginning of October. And it's just not feasible for me to turn off both of those things every time I want to film something. It's just so hot. So, sorry, I do the best I can. Let's get on with what I did last night. Okay, so I was all ready to base these pleats down last night when I realized that I hadn't even sewed the lining together. It was all basted. So. <laughs> I went ahead with the machine and sewed on my side seams here. That undid all of my careful pinning of my pleats in the back, but that turned out to be a good thing because when I <laughs> looked at it after I had finished, I realized that I was overthinking things again. So as you can see, I have only tacked the back pleating down 
to the back lining to here. The rest of this is free and it's hanging. I did not do that on the mock-up and that was the reason that I thought that the mock-up looked a little wonky. When I looked at this again to repin, I realized the skirts just want to follow the end of this. So that's what I did. I pinned all of the skirts back, put them down to the point here. And when I flipped it around and editing Jackie will show you this on Gertie hanging, it looked so much better. I mean, it's still not perfect, um, but it is so much better. And even now, like looking here, like it looks like it's supposed to. So it was a happy accident. So in any case, last night, um, I did serge the straps of the lining. I was trying to hold off because I'm using a quarter inch seam and this is a three eighth seam, but it was just fraying so bad that I, I couldn't handle it. I also <laughs> actually sewed the lacing strips onto the front. They had only just been basted. I also just tacked down this extra fabric. I kind of tucked this under, fixed it that way so that, cause it was getting in the way and it was really annoying. I'm gonna do that on my other gown as well. Then I went back and I back stitched in a very wide stitch the skirt to the lining. I did not want to baste this because these skirts are so heavy that I was afraid it was just going to just come right out. So this will be easy to take out because the stitch length is so long if I need to take them out later. So now I'm going to get all of my kit on, test everything, make sure it's all right. Then I can go ahead, sew on the skirts permanently, and then I can start finishing up all of my edges and start getting this gown closer to a finished project. After trying it on, I realized I needed to bring the skirt up higher, so I marked where it needed to go and ripped out my pseudo basting and redid it. Strap time! Using my serger, I sewed on the straps, sandwiching the bodice between the lining side and the outside. Once those were pressed, I placed the top binding strip at the top of the bodice and pinned. Once that was hand stitched down, I turned under the outside edge of the straps and tunnel stitched them closed. No need to do this on the inside portion because that's what the sleeves will get sewn onto. To finish the front end, I matched the lining to the bodice front and turned under the tops on both sides. It'll get pinned most of the way, but the last few inches will get hemmed separately. Here's a quick spin of the pinned bodice front. Having a little issue closing it, but I realized later that's because it wasn't laced tight enough. Okay, I've got good news and I've got bad news. First, the good news. This completely coming apart sleeve pattern that I originally drew up when I was mocking this up ages ago actually fits almost perfectly into my sleeve head. The only problem with it is that the seam on the back is in the wrong spot. It's directly under my arm, which is modern construction. And it's supposed to be sort of on the back of the arm. So. When I tried this on this morning, let me just say what a pain in the ass it is now to do fittings with this because I have to put on all of the stuff to fit it and it just takes almost a half an hour. I pinned my old muslin onto the left side of my gown and went ahead and starting from the side back seam, I just drew a line all the way up to the top of the sleeve. And I'm going to sew this together and then just cut on that line. Well, I'll probably just make it a little bit straighter. And then I'm just gonna cut on the line and draw it onto another sheet of paper and go from there. The bad news, put this on, there was a lot of wrinkling happening in the front. I got really frustrated with it and ended up taking out most of the skirts. Now, with some slight adjustments, I was able to get the left side of my body looking really good, but not the right side. My plan now, and this sucks because I was getting so close 
to having everything completed. I'm going to unpick my spaced back stitch on the back, smooth it out, restitch that, and then I'm going to take my pin side that works and do a point by point measure on the other side in hopes that that fixes the wrinkling, at least enough to get it to look good. Cross your fingers for me, y'all. I straightened out my mark on the sleeve and cut it. On the left here, this sleeve block is the sleeve from the 1760s Robe à la Française from American Duchess. I'm using it to mark the width of the bottom of the sleeve because while the size of the head fit, it was way too loose at the elbow. I then traced the block onto a fresh sheet of paper and added seam allowances. I'm also using the American Duchess sleeve to shape the top of the arm side because it's a nicer, smoother curve. Notice I'm marking all of my points on this shoulder. Don't forget to do this. You will regret it. Then I cut two in muslin, pinned them on the gown, and tested out my mobility by doing an awkward dance. Would it be done anyway else? And now for something completely different. Okay, that's where we're gonna stop for today. Because this video is so long, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on wrap up. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you who have made it to this point. If you liked this video, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. If you want to make my day, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you're working on, listening to or watching, or just tell me a joke. I love a joke. And the world is crap right now, so that's it for today. I'll catch you all next time.